I'm Richard and welcome to ZP Productions. Today is a late night thoughts and the topic is among the flagship cameras, which do I actually prefer? The R3 or the A1? Now, uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I do quite a little bit of portrait and you know, the R3 is something I've been reviewing recently. In fact, take a look at the links up somewhere here. I did both the initial look. I also did my experience with three photo shoots and of course, a good section on autofocus. Today's video is not a review and it's really something um, of my opinion because this is the late night thoughts and really, which do I prefer? Now, if you're looking for a review, do you know, go out and take a look at those two videos because today is a very opinionated video. If you want to share your opinions, write down in the comments below. Now, first, among these two camera, which do I prefer? Now, both of them is owned by me, you know. Uh, I have to honestly say, if you have followed me for some time, the A1 was purchased because I wanted to review the Sony system and I was contemplating between the A7R4 and the A1. To me, buying equipment is kind of like traveling, you know, it's experience to me. I always like to test the latest gadget. So if it's something that I feel is useful for me, normally I'll just purchase it. Yes, it's an expensive expense. And I can tell you honestly, photography uh, as, you know, as some sort of assignments will never recover my camera cost here. Neither can my YouTube. But I enjoy using them. It's like traveling, really. It's like traveling. <laughs> it's an experience to use the latest camera. Same as some people who buy the, for example, the latest graphics card or the latest CPU kind of stuff. So I bought the A1 because I wanted a camera that is fast, reliable, alternative to my R5 then. And not only that, a camera that I can use for reviews because I love reviewing stuff and a camera that can definitely bring out the feel and really, you know, capture the moment. So that's how the A1 came about. Um, it was never intended to be my main camera, but you know, during the time where I purchased my Sony A1, my wife decided to go uh, professional in terms of uh, taking kids photos. So I gave her my R5 and now she's actually earning money, recovering the money of the R5, unlike me. <laughs> I mean, somebody did ask me, do I do a lot of photography job? Very little. I do actually more of collaborations. Uh, and occasionally I have you know, some assignments here and there, but they are definitely not enough to purchase the equipment I purchase. I mean, if you are a full-time photographer, do not follow my buying habits. <laughs> That's what I say. Now, the thing is, the Canon system is what I always like a lot because of the lens, the 85 1.2, the 85 1.2 DS, and then of course 2870 f2. Those are really nice lenses. So I can say that from the start, I'm a little bit biased to Canon. I have to say the truth, a little bit biased to Canon. But then again, I used the Sony for a good eight months and uh, I enjoy it thoroughly. Uh, there are some quirks that I didn't like about it. And in fact, today's video, I'll talk about it. So the R3 is something I purchased really recently. I purchased when it first launched, you know, before some of you guys ever even collect your pre-order, I collected the pre-order. So I'm lucky to get it like first hand, first feel around the world as a production set purchase off the shelf. Now, that being said, both are purchased by me, so um, when it comes to actually comparing which do I prefer, it really depends on uh, what do I see using both of them. And as I said, I'm a portrait photographer, mainly doing portraiture, be it for collaboration purposes or for assignments, it's always portraiture, no nothing else. And I honestly have to say the truth that after using it for a week now, no, that would be six days, um, running it through multiple photo shoots, I didn't like you know, bring it out and shoot some birds, no, no such thing. I actually use it for photo shoots itself. Um, I have to say the truth is that I actually think that the R3 is a better portrait camera. And there are a few reasons. In fact, let me share with you in this video why I think the R3 is a better portrait camera. No, but before maybe I start that, no, let's talk about why the A1 is better. It's straightforward. The A1 is better because it is smaller, less fatigue. It is lighter, less fatigue. Um, it has, I would say, as 45 megapixels. No, wrong, 50 megapixels. 
plenty of pixels to go around. You can crop like crazy. It's autofocus, it's reliable. But I'll talk about that more in the future later when I come talk about the R3. And most importantly, um, when you are shooting with the A1 because of all this factor itself, um, it's quite easy to actually communicate with your models. In fact, that's something I will highlight later when I'm using the R3. Um, that is some of these things. And not only that, the Sony system, at least for today, is supported widely also by third party. You can use lens from Sigma quite easily. You can use uh, their own Sony lenses. And I will say the truth also is that if you are looking for some sort of hybrid camera after shooting portrait, you want to do some short videos, the A1, at least, at least, at least my initial impression, seems to be slightly better. Now, so why do I feel that the R3 is a better camera for me? Firstly, I do not crop that much in my photos. Normally, when I take a photo, I don't crop more than 10-20%. Mainly, it's for like leveling, rotation, and then you know, perfecting the framing. So, I don't crop that much. So, maybe 24 megapixels to me never had an issue. You know, Always can get what I want with good amount of resolution. Secondly, um, the LCD behind. Now, this may sound very trivial to you guys, but when you should portrait this, is actually really important. So, the A1's biggest issue when you shoot portrait is that you can't flip this thing out. I mean, it's landscape and landscape only. While the Canon R3, you can flip this out. And this flippy thing is actually a big deal to me. Um, it is, in fact, the reason I always contemplated buying the second R5 rather than using the A1. And I will never contemplate to buy the A7R4 unless they have the flippy screen, which it appeared in the A7 IV. Uh, that's another question of story of its own. So the archery with this screen really made a difference and it made the whole experience shooting portrait outside a lot more enjoyable. And next, also related to the screen. The screen is actually brighter than uh, the one on the A1, brighter than most camera screens I've seen so far. Uh, this LCD that Canon used this time is really good. I can show you a photo here. It is slightly brighter than the A1. And if I show you the outdoor version, the photo here, it is significantly bright enough that you can actually see in daylight. I mean, it's not as bright as my iPhone 13 uh, Pro, but it's definitely bright enough that I can see in daylight easily. And with the 2D screen, there will never be an angle I cannot shoot with my R3. No other camera I know has a EV, uh, should I say, LCD that is truly bright enough and usable enough in almost any conditions. And I think the archery kind of almost fit that. That's a very important element if you are doing photography outdoors, especially if you do portraiture, because you really want to frame your subjects properly. And then next is that uh, the ergonomics of the camera is also slightly better. Other than one factor, I'll talk about it now. Remember I said about communicating with your subjects. So the ergonomics when you actually shoot this camera is that simple. If you are a portrait photographer, the grip is important. And then the grip here is also really thick and nice. The button overall layouts are okay. Except I didn't like where the play button is. The play button is here. I'm not used to it. It's a, I think that is a habitual thing. But other than that, uh, with the portrait grip, it is nicer to use. Now, of course, you can say that you, know, you can fit a portrait grip to the A1, but that will be a significant amount of additional expense to a really expensive camera already, you know. So I usually use the A1 as it is. So you can augment it, you know, some can argue that you can augment it too. And of course with the grip, it comes with a better battery life. And uh, when I was using the R3, I did the three shoots and tons of tests, I think few hundred or few thousand shots of you know, bursting and testing. The R3 did not run out of battery after the test and the three shoots. Uh, it even had more battery left than the A1, which only did some tests and then you was playing around and only did one shoot, you know. So the R3 battery life is phenomenal. I mean, if I had a weekend of uh, shoots to do, I think one battery can probably last through all the shoots. I mean, each of my shoots are like an hour, an hour and a half. And even if I do some assignments, if I do pick up uh, from my wife's studio, um, that will no longer be, I would say it's, it's not longer than three hours. I mean, pretty much one battery can do it all. So that is the battery part of things. I mean, once again, you can buy a grip and augment it and the A1 will be on par. And then uh, 
the eye control AF also. Uh, the eye control AF is actually pretty good because uh, there are times if you assist the camera a little bit, it does help you uh, obtain the eye AF or you know correct focusing. Uh, the A1 you have to move the joystick around, but with the R3, make your focusing box slightly bigger. Activate subject tracking. Use the eye control AF. You can actually jump straight to the subject's face really easy, and you don't make the camera do a lot of hunting in the process. Sometimes the camera do weird stuff too. Uh, same as the A1, but the R3 with the eye control AF allows me to jump very quick to the subject I want. So that is actually a perk. And uh, then the next thing. I want to talk about is actually the autofocus system itself. Um, I mean, if you have seen my previous video, um, not that I'm biased to the Canon system, but after shooting eight months of the A1 and I think nine months of the R5 and now going back to the R3, it kind of reinforced my thoughts on this, is that the Sony autofocus system is very sensitive. Um, and... It, there is something to fault at times because of it also. Because a lot of times when you focus on the eye, uh, for some reason, the Sony cameras tend to focus on the hair, the side of the face, the lashes. While the Canon system tends to be a bit more resistant to that, even with a 1.2 lens or 1.8 lens or f2 lens, it tends to get it on the iris more often. Um, just my thoughts on that. I mean, more tests will have to be done, uh, but even in the R5 days, that is my experience. It's just that the R5 isn't as good as the A1 when it comes to you know, throwing the lens to the focus point, moving the lens quick enough, and also the R5 isn't as good as the A1 when it comes to eye detection at times because the A1 tends to pick it up a lot quicker. Uh, the R5 is a little bit slower on that. But the R3 seems to be doing the same thing as the A1, yet having the benefits of the R5 Five, which is the smaller AF box that tends to focus on the eye better and therefore giving me less headache. And the other thing is that, you know, some one of my shoots is that it was a night scene, right, in my last video. Um, and during that video itself, or should I say, during that photo shoot itself, I experienced the benefits of the archery quite a lot because not only can I use the eye control to guide the AF box to the subject's face because it's a night shoot, so you know if you don't guide it, it tends to wander around a little bit. But additionally, you know the IBS was working perfectly with the autofocus. It was not jittery. It was not uh, making my photos blur or anything. I could use continuous AF at one fifty of a shutter, one forty of a shutter with IBS, and that is something that I'm pretty sure using the A one will be a pain, will be a pain. Because with the A1, I noticed that if I was to shoot at the kind of shutter speed, 140, 150, with IBs and continuous AF on, for some reason, the shots will always be slightly soft. Maybe it's because of the 45 megapixels and then also, you know, uh, the A1 is very sensitive. While the R3 tends to be a little bit more reliable on the eye detection. That's my thought today. I mean, of course, more stuff have to be reviewed. But, you know, at least through the three shoots, it kind of reinforced my thoughts on that. And not only that, the IBs together with the uh, more I was a stable autofocus allowed me to just shoot nighttime in lower lighting the same way as I shoot in daytime, you know. 140 of a shutter, I don't need to resort to single shot AF and then having the whole troublesome thing of shifting the AF around and then pointing on the eye and then doing a single shot AF to capture my stuff. I just use continuous AF, eye detection, and then use eye control to just throw my rough area onto the person's face and lock on. So that is another really great perk of the R3. Now, and the last one I want to talk about is that the 30 FPS on the R3, or should I say the operations of 30 FPS on the R3. Now, the A1, I mean, if you go online and see and read a lot of things like that, uh, when you do burst, some things get slowed down. I mean, the EVF will just get a little bit slower, a little bit lower rest. Um, kind of thing, you know that you are shooting burst. That's what I would say. You know that you are shooting burst. I shouldn't say that the EVF gets slower. It's more like it just down rest to give you that slightly lower quality feel. Uh, but you know that you are shooting a burst. On the R3, on the other hand, when it bursts, it maintains that you know, frame rate, it maintains that view 
Sometimes I don't even know I press the button, you know. <laughs> I have to ask myself, did I press the shot? Because when I was doing my day shoot with the R3, um, that is exactly how I felt most of the time. I mean, I just burst and it's really quick, really fast. I don't even know that there is a change. It's not, I don't even know whether is it bursting or not. <laughs> but when I check my files, it's there and available for me to inspect, delete whatever I want and carry on. The whole experience of burst on the R3 is, I would say, slightly better than the A1. And, irrega and regardless you are using SD card or CF card, I find that either one is uh, reliable, it's fast. You don't ever need to wait for the camera because unless you are bursting 150 shots away, the SD card clears in like seconds too. Unlike the A1, you know, if you're using SD card, you can actually see the SD card getting loaded, which is uh, kind of irritating. I mean, you can of course buy CF Express Type A, but you know, it's troublesome when your laptop has SD card reader, but you need to buy a Type A reader to just put it next to your computer or buy a cable to connect your A1 to the computer itself, uh, it's always nicer to just have SD card to just pop in your computer and just read from there. I mean, these are little, little things when you're actually doing uh, photos and then post-processing because, you know, photography is not about just shooting, it's about everything else, you know, from the start of planning all the way to the end, processing the photos and what's not. So every single step that irritates you on the way just irritates you. So yeah, the R3 is just friendlier to SD cards, you know, and I could just pop it in, read it, use it edit, pop it back to the camera, continue my life. So it's a little, little things. I mean, I won't say this is an official reason to ever buy R3 or A1, but if you have a laptop or computer with an SD card reader slot, um, these kind of thoughts will probably go through your mind, definitely. And uh, the other thing about the burst also is that on the A1, you have to switch your RAW to compress RAW. Now, uh, is there a lot of difference between the compress and non-compress? Uh, not a lot unless you're doing high dynamic range shoot but exactly when I do burst I do burst outdoors and when I shoot outdoors with the burst I want the dynamic range so anything that gives me a little bit more dynamic range I'll take it so the compressed raw is uh, sometimes uh, I don't know I don't feel confident in it that's what I'll say so I will have to just stick to 20 FPS on my uh, A1 on the R3 on the other hand I can shoot full resolution raw with 14 bit full dynamic range everything at 30 fps so i would just shoot 30 fps so to me it's more transparent and when you are in the field you just switch to high speed mode you just shoot call it a day while the a1 you need to switch to compress raw shoot and then remember to switch out compress raw if you're using 30 fps unless you're not going to use 30 fps 20 fps then you switch so it's, it's like that and after you burst ready as i said the clearing speed of the R3 is faster than the A1. So if you are doing portraiture, you want to say, hey, go, post, shoot, post, shoot. Okay, flick ahead, shoot. The kind of feeling, right? Um, the R3 just gets the job done better. Um, while the A1 tends to need to load a bit if you're using SD card. Of course, uh, once again, if you're using CF Express Type A, no issues on that. And I do have CF Express Type A. Okay. And... Uh, let me think if I have any more things I want to rent today. Uh, I guess it's the lens. The 85 1.2 RF is just better than the Sigma 1.4. I mean, um, Sony should update their 85 1.4 GM. I just didn't like the lens. I mean, uh, I didn't like it wide open. I didn't like it stop down a little. I have to stop it down to like 2.8 to be satisfied with the lens. So I would say as maybe it was just also one contributor why I didn't really like the Sony system. Except when I'm using the 35mm GM. I think that lens is fantastic. Canon is slower in that regards. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, there's one more thing. I just want to talk about the ergonomics aspect. So there's one part of things that I prefer the A1, or should I say a, a camera without an integrated grip. And it's actually a significant issue when you do portraiture. Uh, this. So when you are blocking your... Uh, face using your camera your mouth is here i mean i'm not sure you can see guys and mouth is here so when you direct your models with the a1 your model can hear what you're saying very very clearly your model can hear what you're saying because your mouth is not blocked by the camera itself and using the r3 oh my god it's blocked 
I never knew such a problem ex- exists until you go to real world shooting and then you tell your models a direction and your model say, I can't hear what you're saying. Can you repeat yourself? I do not know what you're saying. Can you repeat yourself? Uh, can you say it again? Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, serious. <laughs> In fact, you know, this is actually the first time I encountered this because I rarely use cameras with grid other than the GFX. But the GFX is a really slow camera. So I got plenty of time to slowly communicate my thoughts to the subject itself. But on the archery, I couldn't. So uh, it's, a, it's a thinking stuff. Uh, I think that probably when I get more used to the archery, I probably have to tell the model like this and then shift it like this kind of stuff. But yeah, this is actually a perk of using the A1. So when the A1 Mark II comes out with the flippy screen, a better screen, and then uh, AF that's not so touchy to hair in front, maybe I would say the A1 is better for portrait for me. Yeah. So overall, this is my... <coughs> sorry. So overall, this is my thoughts on the A1 versus the R3. I mean, this is my late night thoughts. It is just here for me to share my opinions. Raw video, share my opinions on it. And uh, I mean, a lot of you guys would be looking to buy either the R3 or the A1. You will not be like me. You won't buy both. No way you will buy both. I can't imagine anybody buying both. I, I, I don't even know what got into me to buy both. But if you really want um, a camera that fits your purpose very well and you need recommendations, uh, you can probably drop me a message below and do tell me what do you want to do with it and if megapixels actually matter to you. The moment you say megapixels matter to you, end of conversation, get the A1. The moment you're not talking about megapixels and you tell me everything else, let's discuss what you need. Now, the Nikon D4, oh shit, no, not Z4, D4, it's uh, Nikon Z9 is coming out and the Z9 will probably change many things. Um, it is a camera that kind of fulfills everything I need from uh, both of these cameras. High megapixels, it's fast, it's flippy screen, can do flip portraits, you know, you can flip landscape too. Uh, it has a fast EVF that doesn't slow down. It does only 20 FPS in RAW. I will never shoot 30 FPS, no RAW, no shoot. Uh, it uses only a CF Express card. That may actually irritate me a little bit because I can't just use the convenience of SD card at times. And it's a heavier body, so that will probably be quite irritating in the field. I mean, if you do like two photo shoots a day, or you do a long assignment of four hours, you don't want the extra 400 grams on your hand. 300, 400 grams on your hand. It's just tiring. So that being said, um, the Z9 seems to be really, really nice. I mean, it feels like uh, in between here. Some of the good stuff of the R3, some of the good stuff of the A1. No mechanical shutter, but uh, Nikon feels that they are safe. And based on both of these cameras, it is quite safe. Modern stack sensor can actually shoot without mechanical shutter and achieve good amount of dynamic range and good amount of quality of photos. Um, it's somewhere in between here. Or maybe, I don't know, I should get an A9. Somewhere between A9 or something like this. Yeah. For the Z9, it's, it's a very simple affair to me. Uh, if you are looking to shoot 30 FPS raw, then the Z9 is out. You need that high speed shutter, Z9 is out. I mean, yes, you can shoot 30 FPS with JPEG, but is that what you want? Uh, as a, at least for a portrait photographer, I will want to shoot 30 FPS raw and choose the raw I want, dump the rest away, and then use that particular photo, edit it to perfection. But the Z9, you can't do a 30 FPS roll. I mean, 20 FPS is actually enough. But if you actually shoot 30 FPS before, you know there is a difference. Really, that small little action, that flick of hair, that flick of the clothes. I mean, recently I've been shooting uh, my day shoots with the R3. The shot was a uh, half flick of, I think, six frames. So if you are using 20 FPS, there will only be four frames. That means you can lose one or two frames that are better in that small little burst. Um, that's one thing. And not only that, uh, you have to, of course, deal with the bigger files. Use CF Express only, which is very costly of a cut. And um, there is not much 
I, I don't know. There is not much disadvantage to get the Z9 other than that. Other than it's heavy too. <laughs> and it's a lot cheaper. So, if you want a slightly heavier camera don't and want to save a little bit of money, want the best, and not tied on to any system, maybe the Nikon is a good idea. I mean, when I was buying the R3, I did contemplate how about, you know, I buy a Z9 and use it as a review camera and also a camera to have a fun shoot. But then I was thinking, shit, I have to buy everything again, all my lenses, uh, another another two or three lenses again, because if I want to keep the Z9 as a review camera, I have to buy a few lens to at least use the Z9, right? I can't use it just purely for reviews. Then I was like, oh, no, 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 that is not tenable. I cannot sustain another system. So it would just be Canon and uh, Sony. Canon at least is something my wife used to earn money for a job, while Sony is my own camera. So the R3 now, I can share lens with my wife. If not, if I need a particular shot or I want a smaller body or I want to do videos, I would take the A1 out uh, rather than the R3. And that is really about it. I mean, the Z9, I'm trying to get a review set. Then I have the triple flagship and then plus GFX 100. Quad, quadruple flagship comparison. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I can get a Z9 anytime soon to review unless somebody here else want to connect me to some Nikon rep. But that being said, really, the, the R3 and the A1, personally, I prefer the... R3 because I don't need the megapixels. I need everything else that supports it. Um, but if you ask me between the R3 and Z9, hmm, at least through the specs, it's a little bit hard to comprehend. I need to get the Z9 on hand. It's not like so clear cut. I mean, there are reasons why I like the R3 even on the spec sheet. But on the Z9, no clear cut. So I do not know. But that's already about it for today. Just sharing my thoughts today. Uh, this is not a review once again. Um, I do prefer the R3 over the A1 when it comes to portraiture because of uh, various reasons. But maybe, you know, after shooting another one, two more months, things may change. I'm not intending to sell my Sony. Don't ask me whether I'm going to list it on somewhere to sell or not. Nope, it's not going to happen. I'm going to keep the Sony because I have plenty of use for it, you know. But the R3 is a phenomenal body for portraiture if you don't need high megapixels and you want the best of everything except megapixels. That's about it for today and I hope you enjoy this. And you notice I got a new table here and I can lift it higher, it goes higher and lower. I mean, this is one of those electric tables which I kind of like. I mean, I always wanted to buy one. Yeah, but yes, so I hope you enjoy this short little video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.